So I came across an interesting best of Redditor updates post, which applied to this channel and I thought you would enjoy. Let's review this situation. This person is a professional reviewer. I received a cease and desist after the publisher reached out for ways to improve. I'm not some big reviewer, 10,000 subs on YouTube, do it as a hobby, not really a job. Recently I posted a review about a new game. I was very critical on a lot of points of the game, but nowhere was I saying anything that was a lie, which is the definition of defamation, right? So that should be legal. But for some crazy reason, this video received a massive influx of views. My normal views are 8 to 13k, and I got 1.6 million views. The publisher reached out, wanted some of my personal opinions on how to improve the game and ways they could make it more enjoyable. I was ecstatic and extremely happy that the company wanted my opinion, of all people, on what to improve or change. I was assuming they reached out to a lot of people to get a pool of ideas to maybe implement them and improve the game. But towards the end of our emails, they asked for my name and address to mail out some swag. I probably sent several pages of ideas and issues, so thought, cool, a poster or something would be nice. But today I received a certified letter that contains a cease and desist about the game, claiming if I continue to spread false information and affect sales, I will be sued. And it also demanded I remove the review video immediately. I privated the video, haven't deleted it. What do I do here? What are my options? My dear lawful masses, if this happens to you, you really do need to spend some time trying to reach out to an attorney. You will probably have a lot of hit and miss to find the right attorney. This poster was ultimately able to find an attorney for, I think, just $250, maybe a little bit more after some of the additional work that you'll see. But because this person followed through on that, there's actually a really happy ending to this story. But I want to take a moment and speak at you because. I talk to a lot of potential clients. I have a lot of free consultations where I don't charge anybody anything, and I still talk to them for a little bit and try to help them figure out if they need me as their attorney or what they need as their attorney or what they can do to help themselves if they can't afford an attorney. And many people are very discouraged to pursue legal claims, even small, easy legal claims, even big, easy legal claims, and definitely discouraged from complicated claims, big or small. So I'm kind of trying to encourage you that when you do hit this brick wall of a problem where you don't know how to overcome, how do you find the right attorney, contact a bunch of people. You'll see what this person did, and they did the right thing, and ultimately that led to a happy ending. Update. So it's been an interesting two months after my post, I started contacting a few attorneys locally and eventually had to call the state bar for a referral because of the types of possible laws. And not a lot of people handle this like a normal lawyer does. It's not a general practice family or criminal thing. I finally found an attorney that understood what I was talking about and wanted a link to the Reddit post and agreed with the majority of the top advice I received. He accepted a small retainer of $250 to respond to the cease and desist I received and a few possible future letters and calls. So it's not necessarily the most expensive thing. Some attorneys will ask for a large retainer up front or a deposit, and you want to know which is which because a retainer, sometimes the attorney keeps that no matter what. A deposit is your money that they're just holding for you and then they'll work for an hourly rate or something. So you'll have to work out those terms. In this case, the attorney took $250 and maybe there was some more hourly billing, but just a couple letters for a couple hundred dollars is normal. He responded by asking them exactly what statements I made that were false and defamatory and requested exact times in the videos that these statements were made. Since I previously privated the video, we had to give them a separate link. He also outlined what will happen if they continued to state that during discovery, and he would be requesting all communications between quality assurance, play testing, developers, and management to see if they were aware of any of these bugs or issues that may compromise a customer's experience while playing. He also included a paragraph calling them out for reaching out to me and lying about swag and wanting feedback. By the way, lawyers can't do that. I can't reach out to an opposing party and pretend to be one thing so that I can trick them into responding to me. But parties can do that. However, you'll see that that can backfire. And here's how it backfired. They didn't 
go through the proper legal channels to obtain his information, and the fact that he still has yet to receive any swag confirmed that that was the case. So this is what we call justified reliance or detrimental reliance. In this case, they offered him swag in return for his ideas. He sent them pages of ideas. They got consideration. He deserves the consideration that he was given, the bargained for consideration or, or deal that he bargained for. So he deserves the swag. Also included is that they need to preserve all the emails they sent to other reviewers because it's of interest in the upcoming legal action. He also requested they preserve all other communications between QA and developers, etc. So after he confirmed receipt of the letter, we waited and waited. Nothing for about a month, but then I received three large boxes containing games, posters, statues, a custom PS4 limited edition console, bobbleheads, Funko Pops, just about every piece of swag I think they have for their three or four games, and a letter saying, sorry, it took so long for us to get this to you. My attorney then sent out another letter asking about the status and their position on the cease and desist, and we received a letter back with only a few sentences basically saying they made a mistake and we can expect no further correspondence on the matter and that the video can be reinstated if we wish. My attorney sent out another letter asking about the lost ad revenue due to me having to private the video since they admitted it was a mistake. They sent out a check for $500 and some papers I need to sign releasing them, so I won't sue them. So thank you, legal advice. I didn't get sued, and after all, I came out ahead. I'm still not going to link my channel or the video or name the company in question, but thanks for all your help. And that is probably the best outcome you could hope for. The victim of the game company got some swag and got a little bit of money and and everything was fully resolved and didn't have to go through with litigation didn't have to spend a lot of money on a lawyer not knowing if they're going to get it back. The company fessed up, ate crow while it was young and tender. They didn't have to eat crow when it was old and tough. That's a great story and a great example of how you should handle these legal problems. If you get a false claim on YouTube, I have so many people contact me who want to pursue some kind of claim against a false claimant on YouTube And then the moment that it reaches some sort of litigation or claim in small claims court or the new copyright small claims court, they don't want to pursue it. Even if it can mean hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars. So it's, so I want to encourage people when they have legitimate claims, the legal system is how you're supposed to resolve those claims and contact an attorney, have a polite and meted measured letter sent You don't have to go over the top. You don't have to be angry and banging on the table when you're in a position of right. Just pursue the claim, get a reasonable outcome, and I bet you that'll work out for you more often than not. But this is also not individualized legal advice, which is the kind of legal advice you want from your attorney who has a duty to you, a fiduciary duty to you. So if you find yourself in that position, you need to contact someone. You can contact me and I'll help you try to find somebody if it's not me, and then you'll have that individualized legal advice that you need. But being angry is fun. Yes, being angry and outraged and all that is fun, but not a great way to pursue your case. Maybe that gets views on YouTube, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't improve your legal position in court. Let me know what you think of that story in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my top supporters in October, Evie, Spirit Bear, Ugly Grill, Torpedon, Good Broge, Pure Magma, Eric Tams, Tech Tech Potato, The Blood Soaked Survivors, King Ares, and Kyle Seifring. You can support more Lawful Masses productions on patreon.com slash ljfrench, sponsors.com slash law, through YouTube memberships, and through Floatplane subscriptions. Join me for my weekly live production stream on twitch.tv slash lawful masses on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern U.S. time. I hope everyone has a great week. I love you all. Bye.